Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from the properties of Laplace transform and here we'll try to find initial and final values directly from the Laplace transform. Now the, the initial values and final value properties allows us to find the initial value f0 of the function ft and the final value f infinity of the function ft directly from its Laplace transform. Now, to obtain these properties we begin with the differential, differential property of equation 15.23. So this we uh, had derived earlier that Laplace transform of a differential function is actually the integral of the differential function multiplied by e raised to the power minus e s t dt. Now this is from the definition of Laplace transform and the final result we had derived is s f s minus f uh, 0 minus. So we'll use this property and so from here we can say that s f s minus f 0 is actually the Laplace of df dt and is actually the integral of df dt e raised to the power minus e t dt. Now if we let s go to infinity the integral of equation 15 14 this integral will vanish due to the damping exponential factor. Now what does this mean is that we are integrating e raised to the power minus st where now we are saying that s is infinity. So what will happen if you look at this graph e minus a t where t is uh, decreasing so ultimately it will become zero. So that is what he is saying here that this function will ultimately become zero vanishes due to the damping exponential factor. So we can write that the limit this function that limit x s tends to infinity will become equal to 0 and from here then we can write that f0 is equal to this term we take on the right hand side so limit s0 sfs so this the equation is called the initial value theorem Okay, now let, let's uh, take an example to understand this. This is the function and its Laplace transform is this from the table of Laplace. So we can write it this. And using the initial value theorem, we had found this that f0 will be limit s tends to infinity s f x. So we mul multiply s with the function this. So our function will become s squared 2s divided by this term and now this is important point that whenever we want to take the limit of s to infinity then we must write the functions in this form because if we put the limit directly so this will be limit divided by limit which is not possible so we'll uh, take common and another important point is that uh, whatever is common in the denominator so like here we take s square common then this will become 1 plus 4 over s plus 1 0 4 over s square the denominator so, and whatever we have taken common in the denominator we will take same term common from the numerator so these two ca gets cancelled ultimately so here we have also taken s square common so it will become 1 plus 2 over s and now these two gets cancels this is left and now we apply the limit so anything divided by infinity will be zero so this will be zero this will be zero and this term will also be zero so we are left with one divided by one which is one answer so the, this is the initial value that at time t is equal to zero we the value is one and uh, which confirms what we would expect from the function. So if you look at the function at t is equal to 0 this will be 1 
and cos mm -hmm. zero is also equal to one, so the value is one. So that is what we have get, get, uh, got here. And now the uh, second part. If we let s tends to infinity uh, zero, then what will happen in this equation? From here, limit x tends to uh, zero. S f x integral of this, then this zero is one. E s is now zero, so this will become one, and so. Uh, ultimately, dt dt will cancel the so integral of f, which is f infinity minus f zero from here, putting the limits. And so, the limit of this is equal to f infinity minus f zero. And since this is independent of s, so both sides uh, we can cancel. And therefore, what is left is that f infinity is equal to limit s of x s tends to zero. So this is the final value theorem. And we'll also uh, uh, this refer to final value theorem and we'll also use an example. So here is the second example to prove my final value theorem. And now the signal is e raised to the power minus 2t sine 5 t u t and for this we will use this function or this transformation and so we get the transformed um, signal f s as shown here. Now applying the final value theorem f infinity is limit s tends to 0. Now this is very confusing you have to keep this in mind. When we were doing f initial, then the limit was s tends to infinity. And when we are doing a, a, a final, that is infinity, then the limit is s tends to zero. So it is just opposite of this. Okay, so limit s tends to zero, s f s. So we multiply this by s, and it will become five s. And the bottom remains same. We'll just open this. Now this is equal to zero. How? When s is equal to zero, this term becomes zero. This becomes zero. This non-zero. But the top or the numerator becomes zero. So obviously the whole answer is equal to zero. And as expected from the given ft, how do we say that as expected from ft? Because if you see in this signal, if time becomes infinity, then this function will become zero, so everything will become zero. e raised to the power minus 2t, as we can see from here, is going down, down, and becoming zero as t is increasing. So zero multiplied by anything is zero. Okay, another example. In this case, ft is sine t u t, and its transform is one over s square plus one. Now this 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 should have been capital F. Anyway, so again applying this formula. So multiply this by s and this is also becoming zero because when we put s is equal to zero this becomes zero but this is incorrect because function ft sine t oscillates between plus one and minus one we know that the sine has a maximum value of one and minimum value of minus one so it is oscillating signal basically and does not have a limit at t is equal to infinity. So it will it will remain oscillating even at t is equal to infinity. So we can't say that this is zero. Although we found this out from the formula. So what we have to keep in mind does the final value theorems cannot be used to find final value of f t sine t because f s has a pole at s is equal to plus minus j. Now this is important if you look at from this. 
uh, and if you have studied the pole, you will know that the root of this is s is equal to plus minus j, and the plus minus j is not in the left half of s plane. Now this is a condition for a function to be to have finite value, and that is in order for the finite value theorem to hold. All poles of Fs must be located in the left half of the S plane. So, since this is not on the left half, this is actually on the imaginary axis. Therefore, we say that the final value theorem does not hold. So, keep this in mind. In all uh, in all the questions that we do, we have to make sure that this holds. In general, the finite value theorem does not apply in the finding of the finite values of sinusoidal functions. These functions oscillate forever and do not have finite values. So, this is just for you to have an uh, idea and keep this point in mind that if it is sinusoidal, you have to check whether it holds or not. Okay, now let's see another example. Find the initial and final values for the function whose Laplace transform is this one. So this is the Laplace transform is already given. So what we do is that we apply the initial value theorem. H0 and as I have told you that when H is 0 or T is 0 then S will be infinity. We will we'll apply limit S is equal to infinity SHS. So limit s tends to infinity, we multiply this with s, it has 20s and the bottom remains same. And now this we also discussed earlier, keep in mind this point, that when s is infinity, while writing the transfer function elements, we have to write it as 1 over s, especially when we are trying to find uh, 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 the initial value or when s is infinity. So keep this in mind. Okay, so what we do here is we have to take first of all from here we take s common. So it will be 1 plus 3 over s and from this one we take s square common. So it will be 1 plus uh, whatever is given here. Okay. So the total common terms in the denominator is s cube, s power 3. So from the numerator also we will take s power 3 common so that these can get cancelled ultimately. So taking s power 3 common this will become now 20 divided by s square. So this is important. First of all you find from the denominator and whatever is the common terms we take that term common from the numerator. Okay, and so when s square and s, uh, sorry, s cube gets cancelled with s and s square, so whatever is left is 1 plus 3s and then 1 plus this term and 20 over s square. And now we apply the limit. So n, when this becomes uh, infinite, the numerator becomes 0. Also, this becomes 0 this becomes 0 and this becomes 0. So whatever is left is this term which is actually equal to 0. So this is the uh, initial value. Now to be sure that the final value theorem is acceptable we check where, where the poles of HS are located. So this we have to do in every problem when you try to find the final value theorem. Let us see the location of the roots. Now from here you can see one of the root is at s minus 3, so minus 3, and from here you can actually uh, find the roots to be at minus 4 plus minus j3, and th this is how it can be uh, written to find the two roots. So this is one of the roots and this is the second root. So it is minus 4 and plus minus j plus 3. So this, these are the another two roots. Now which all have negative real parts. Important. So it is negative. So it is the first one is here on the real axis 
and the second one also has a negative real part that means it is here somewhere here although it has imaginary parts also but these poles are all lying on the left hand side of the plane and therefore uh, our final value theorem will hold and now we'll find the initial values so for initial value we take this h here it is uh, sorry initial value is this one now this is the final value so h infinity limit s tends to 0 shs so we multiply this by s we get this one and now here we can put uh, the value directly s is equal to 0 putting in this we again get an answer which is equal to 0 so both initial value and final values are 0 okay now we'll solve the practice problem 15.7 and here also we have to obtain the initial and final values. This is the function given. The name has now been changed from HS to GS. So this is how we we'll proceed. Applying the initial value theorem. Now we'll write here G0 instead of H0. Limit S tends to infinity SGS. And so S multiply by this term. Now S and S will get cancelled. So this is what is left. And now we'll apply the uh, limit. But before applying limit, as I had mentioned, we have to convert it into 1 over S form. So from here, now just to make it easy, I have just opened it. So this becomes the first term and all other remains same. Now from here you can see that easily we can take s square common and from here we'll take s common. So we have taken s square common and the remaining terms are here. Then we take s common and then we have 1 plus 3 over s. So we have now s square and s common from the denominator. So we'll take s power 3 common from the numerator. And now these two terms or three terms will get cancelled. S cube cancels S square and S. So this is what is left. And now we'll uh, just plug in the limit. So everything with S will become 0. So we have 6 then 0 plus 0 because anything divided by infinity is 0. And so our answer is 6. This is the uh, initial value. Now we have to check whether the final value theorem is applicable or not. So we have learned that to be sure the final value theorem is applicable, we check whether the poles of the GS, where the poles of the GS are located and we know that it has to be in the left half plane for final value theorem to be applicable. Now the poles if you see from here we have S that means 0. From here we get s minus 2 and since it is a square so we'll have two poles at minus 2 and from here you get minus 3. So these are the poles. Now all three are on the in the left hand side but 0 is not. So for 0 actually there is an exception. So the exception, the only exception to this requirement that is the poles must have the negative real part is the case when fs has a simple pole at s is equal to 0. And why is this exception? Because 1 over s will be nullified by s of s. So as you can see from here, this was nullified by this. And now here there is no s in the denominator. So the final value theorem will hold in this case also. And just simply apply the formula h final or for it should be g final is equal to limit s tends to 0 s g s and now since s is 0 so we can directly put the value of s uh, without going to 1 over s terms so we just put the values so 0 0 and this will be 5 and here also you get 4 and 3 so 12 so 5 over 12 and is equal to 0 0.4167 so i hope this gives you an understanding uh, how you can solve this type of question easily.
Thank you.